On December the 9th, 2009, 18 years after its submission, Kent Hovind's doctoral dissertation was finally leaked to the internet on the website wikileaks.org. In this video series, I intend to go through this document line by line and submit it to the peer review it has been so sadly lacking all of these years. Anyway, on to the fun. Page one, line one. Patriot University. Dissertation for Doctor of Philosophy in Christian Education. Now that sentence in itself is an oxymoron. Go look that up. A project submitted to Dr. Wayne Knight, submitted by Kent Hovind, Pensacola, Florida, May 25th, 1991. And then we move on to the dedication page, or pages, because there's two of them. I can think of many people who have been influential in the production of this book. Yeah, I bet you can. Miss Kim Van Gundy spent countless hours typing, correcting, and retyping the manuscript, which we presume is that she typed it, corrected it, spelling mistakes and factual errors, and then retyped it, removing all the corrections. My mum and dad supplied the computer for this work to be done on. I thought Miss Kim Van Gundy supplied the typewriter to type it, correct it and retype it. But we'll let that one go. There have been many times they've financially supported my ministry. Yes, Kent, I'm sure they have. And I wonder if you paid the tax on those donations. My wife has put up with me reading well into the night many, many times. Yes, the sound of Kent reading, stumbling over long words and trying to pronounce them, probably would keep anybody up well into the night. She has also patiently let me spend hundreds of hours on the phone gathering information and scheduling meetings. Well, yep, because that was probably preferable to listening to you reading Janet and John books. In those hundreds of moments when I thought of not completing this work, she encouraged me to go on. So there you go, folks. Blame it on his wife because it's all her fault. My three children, Kent, Andrew, Eric and Melissa, have often travelled with me as I preach on the subject of dinosaurs and the Bible. God, I bet they were bored. They have been a great help to me as we set up, and later pack up, three tables full of books, bones, tapes, maps and graphs for each meeting. So they were roadies. They certainly weren't very good at selling stuff, because otherwise they wouldn't have had to pack up a whole three tables full of books, bones, tapes, maps and graphs. Patriot University inspired me, the continue, my education by making it possible for me to study at my own pace and complete this thesis as I could. Inspired me, the continue. <laughs> Miss Kim Van Gundy can't have been very good at spelling and grammar. And Patriot University mm, says a lot. Hundreds of pastors and laymen have encouraged me to continue on this unusual and unique ministry. Yeah. <laughs> Many science teachers and writers have left their mark in my life. Unfortunately, they didn't hit him hard enough. Some of these have been evolutionists and some have been creationists. But I'm betting most of them were probably creationists. Most of all, I must thank my Lord Jesus Christ for patiently working with me and equipping me for the work of the ministry. I marvel that he has counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Hmm, so it's all his fault too. At this point, we would usually have a table of contents and an abstract, an abstract being maybe a paragraph or two that summarizes the rest of the document, so we don't have to wade through the entire 102 pages to find out what Mr. Hovind is talking about. However, in this case, we don't. We have an introduction, a five-page introduction. 
but let's wade through it. Hello, my name is Kent Hovind. I can't think of the last time I saw a dissertation that started with hello. Ah, yes, the next sentence. I am a creation science evangelist. That'll explain it. I live in Pensacola, Florida. I have been a high school science teacher since 1976. And he has been repeating that line ever since in every single video he's ever done. I've been very active in the creation evolution controversy for quite some time. As an evangelist, God has given me the opportunity to preach and teach the wonderful story of his marvelous creation over 400 times each year to churches, schools, public and private, parent groups, youth groups, on the radio and in university debates. So basically what he's saying is up until 1991, he has been preaching his crap to anybody who will listen with no academic qualifications whatsoever. It is my burning desire to help Christians get back to the simple faith in God's Word. Satan's method has always been to instill doubt in God's Word. The first sentence that came from Satan that is recorded for the use in the Bible is, Yes, hath God said. He started by questioning God's word in the Garden of Eden. It worked there, so he has used it ever since. Hmm. And of course he provides references for this. Nope. Nope. No sign of references. Carry on. In the 20th century, the major attack Satan has launched has been against the first 11 chapters of Genesis. He knows the entire Bible stands or falls on the validity of these chapters. So basically, what he's stating here is that only the first 11 chapters matter. The rest of it is bollocks. Well, we already knew that, so nothing new here. Carry on. I believe that the Bible is the infallible, inerrant, inspired, perfect word of God. Well, you can believe it, Kent, but it doesn't make it true. I believe that the Bible needs to be read and believed as it stands. Presumably also including talking snakes and flying donkeys. Christians are often guilty of neglecting or twisting the Bible to fit their lifestyle or their preconceived ideas. Preconceived ideas like genocide is bad, slavery is bad, incest is bad, bad. Then again, he does come from Florida, so maybe just the first one. In this book, I'll be covering, in a nutshell, the creation-evolution controversy. I will explain why it is so important, the effects that the theory of evolution has on our society, the creation alternative, and what we should do about the problem. At this point, I would say, education, education, education. But that's just me. I will try to answer questions that modern science has raised from a scriptural viewpoint. Not a scientific viewpoint. A scriptural viewpoint. That's like trying to explain quantum physics through the medium of interpretive dance. <laughs>